Hi Scorpio, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your weekly tarot check. This is for the week of May 30th through June 6th for all Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. If you're new to the channel, I'm glad you're here. Welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, you can always check back in a couple of days and watch a new reading or even look around on the Monday readings because the format is different every week. It's a different style of reading. So it's always somebody's reading, but it's not going to be everyone's every time. And um, thanks to everybody for subscribing and hitting that like button. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to invite you to join us. Somebody asked if you can subscribe to only one sign. I'll look into it, um, but I, I don't believe that's a possibility. I think you have to just subscribe to the channel and it's kind of like take what you want and leave the rest, right? So, all right. What advice do you have for Scorpio? Sun, moon, rise, and Venus. What does Scorpio need to know, please? What messages do you have for Scorpio, please? Okay. All right, so we'll begin here with the tarot and then we'll have the angel answers here too. You've got the Page of Wands, the Two of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Wheel of Fortune. The Four of Cups, the uh, Nine of Swords, the Six of Cups, and the Knight of Swords. Okay, well, things are moving forward. You're definitely going to get communication, if there's, especially if there's some kind of love relationship here. Um, it could be either somebody from the past or reconciliation. If you've been waiting on that, it's going to move forward. You've got, the, um, you've got water, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, of course. You've got Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and you've got Aries, Leo, Sagittarius here. Um, so with this, you've got, um, take, you know, putting yourself out there a little bit. Go out and have some fun here. Take some action. It's like you're out in the community again. You're out being more visible again, and it brings in new elements. It makes you feel alive again. The Page of Wands is a great big cheerleader kind of energy. It's a happy, affable energy. So it may be that too, people you encounter, like if you're in some kind of group fitness class, I feel like you keep laughing with these people. They're having, you're having fun together. You're doing things for yourself. It's a very uplifting energy. You are an uplifter. That is your natural set point is to uplift and to love. And so sometimes we get mired down by humanity, right? But that's not who we really are. We're this, we're this uplifting kind of fun energy and growing in the meantime, because you've definitely got expansion here. So when we look at this, if you're, you know, like I said, those of you that are wondering about a relationship, it's got the energy to move forward for sure. And in a really beautiful way, you know, this is something that moves, but it's, um, has, has real love and roots here. Okay. There's not, it's not just moving forward in a, in a position of, you know, this, it feels like these were opposite. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, it moves forward though, in a way of mutuality. There's trust here. There is um, an energy that can't be broken if it's a reconciliation. So things like you may hear that person's name or see their initials on things. All of a sudden there's a semi truck or a billboard and all of a sudden their initials are on it. Or you overhear a conversation and they say the person's first name in the conversation. And you go, my God, why does this keep happening? Well, it's, they're thinking about you. They're, they've got you in their heart just as much as you have them and yours, and whether you'll admit it or not, um, because I feel like somebody here wants to be done with it, but they can't seem to do it. Um, for others of you, though, you know, if it's in terms of a new new relationship, it's really having a strong desire, wanting that kind of a relationship that's mutual and that's committed and um, has real love in it, not this kind of forced stuff where you don't really feel it, but you make it work. It's not that. This is something where it's supposed to be. So the Seven of Pentacles, you're definitely seeing manifestations. And again, it may be those things, like I said, where it's just seems coincidental, but it's not. Or you see the person's car and they've got some really rare car. 
where you see the car they've always dreamed of. And like I said, it's this rare thing. And you go, my God, why does that keep showing up everywhere I am? Go send it to them. Um, but with the, um, the Seven of Pentacles, it's really about cultivating your life. You are seeing, you know, from within, so without, you're seeing that you are the cause and everything around you is the effect, that you are creating your own reality. So these pentacles represent manifestations in the 3D reality. In this time-space reality, you're seeing it show up. So it may feel like you're waiting a little bit, like what's next, but enjoy those little things as they come. You know, even if it's more of a money situation for you and you're just finding like you're, you find money here and there or you get a check, they realize they over um, charged you on something or they miscalculated something. Enjoy those things and recognize that that's the universe bringing in that bigger desire. There's a woman that that fully outright claims that she used the law of attraction to win uh, like a mega millions. I mean, she's had multiple videos about it. And I mean, she's been on the news and stuff. She legitimately won it. So you can do it too. I mean, there's, I'm not saying, you know, I know some people go, wait a minute, what? Um, but, you know, there's no shortage here. So you have to get clear about what you want because the wheel of fortune brings in that extra push. It's that extra bit of what feels like luck, but it's fortune. It's a fortunate series of events that's happening for you. Things go into alignment and you go, my God, I couldn't have had better timing. I can't believe I, you know, was, I, I was picked for this thing. Everywhere I go, I'm always getting called to the front of the line. I get the best parking spots. I get whatever it seems. I, I, I don't even have to ask. It just shows up. It's that kind of energy. And you may find that people go out of the way to do things for you too in this energy. Um, so with the Wheel of Fortune though, it's moving things forward and it's high vibrational, very high frequency energy. So if you attract a relationship in this kind of energy, that high vibrational attraction, it keeps it sustainable. It's when we're in a bad place and we attract somebody and we think, well, this will be the solution. And it never is because it won't last. But with this, you're in a place where you attract something significant and it's cha it changes things dramatically in a very positive way. So with the Four of Cups, this can be a bit of an energy of wanting a change, desiring a change, but it can be a little bit of um, frustration on some, to some extent, wanting that change but not seeing it happen. And so you've got to get open to it. For some of you, this can be a card of being outside, getting back into nature, getting yourself centered, take your socks and shoes off, really connect with the earth, walk through that grass, walk through the sand. I mean, pay attention where you're walking maybe, but you know, you have, it's really about putting your feet down or maybe you just stand still and you just meditate on the feeling you have between your body and the earth. But it's that sort of that invisible cord, right? That connects you to the universe because you're never disconnected from the universe. You are the universe, so you can't get disconnected. You know, I heard once um, something Ram Dass said about, um, you know, when you understand that we're all one, you would never cheat us. We would, you would never lie to us or get angry with us. And so it's really getting into that place where you really recognize that field of potential, of infinite potential, because you are it. So the Nine of Swords shows a bit of restlessness, and I do feel like it's connected to the Seven of Pentacles and Four of Cups. Um, my palm is itching, so I feel like there's somebody here that's going to get money. Um, so if you've had some restlessness or uncertainty about finance, things are definitely moving forward there. Um, so if I haven't talked about that enough, maybe that's why the itching started. But the Nine of Swords allow it to be an opportunity instead of an obstacle because sometimes this restlessness people panic and they go oh my god i'm not sleeping what does that mean well you know you can allow yourself to say there must be an opportunity to meditate here for a minute i think i'll do that and i'll just keep myself calm and i won't worry about what hasn't happened yet i'll just be in the right now that there's an opportunity there's a stillness here and i go into my own personal place of stillness here and it gets you centered. And so you may find that really shifts your energy field too. So the Six of Cups is a card of a relationship from the past. It can be somebody just from the past, but it can be an ex too. So be aware of that reconciliation people. 
and it brings back a, a feeling of connection, reconnection, happiness, taking care of each other. I mean, you look at all the gold in the card. Those are this very positive symbol of the uh, universe bringing in gifts. So it may be too that something you've been wanting with that seven of pentacles shows up here and it's been an answer to a very strong asking. You know what you want. You're very clear about it. The desire is there and the universe will answer you and here it comes. So it is a lighthearted energy though and it may feel like a gift, like it's like it's finally here and that amazing feeling you get when you've waited for something and it shows up, you know that one. Feel it now. Have the feeling now and it'll be here. So the Knight of Swords comes in. I told you it was communication earlier. We didn't talk much about this. But it can be very swift. And it may be that as a relationship starts with the Wheel of Fortune and the um, Knight of Swords here, it does take off with some momentum. So things may start to move forward very quickly and gain some speed and momentum. Allow it to carry you. You know, there's no fear here unless we decide it with the mind. The mind comes up with fear. The ego is eternal. I mean, excuse me, the um, soul is eternal. So unless the ego comes into play, there's no fear with this. It's really what you've been asking for. So that's the thing. When there's a delay and we want it to happen, and then when it takes off and you go, wait a minute, slow down, that's pretty confusing energies, right? So be okay with it kind of feeling like there's a bit of a catalyst with that Wheel of Fortune and Knight of Swords and allow it to just unfold without trying to interfere or slow things down in some way. So there's definitely, like I said, there's definitely a love relationship here, but there's nice money aspects too and communication with that as well. So let's see uh, about the angels have to say here for Scorpio. All right, you have here, get more information. So whatever's causing some angst here, you know, it may be just asking the right questions, those mature questions and allowing the answers to come to you. And that alleviates that. You've got romance here. And especially with that six of cups, even though there's sort of an innocent feeling about it, there's definitely a caring here. And of course, the two of cups, um, a very, um, a relationship that has a lot of, um, like in, inspired ideas and romantic things that come into play. And it may be small things in, in terms of that six of cups, but they're special, right? So ask for help from others. So again, don't be shy if there's somebody in your, in your environment with the page of wands, because that's that uplifting energy. Within the next few months, things are moving forward. You've got, now you've got reconsider. And when you get this, sometimes it's too much specificity on the exact how is this going to happen or how this is going to unfold. And I've told a couple stories about how I wanted something. I didn't worry about how it was going to happen. And then uh, honestly, COVID came into play, right? And I didn't, I would never design that. And it was nothing horrible for anyone, but it was like such an odd way to go about it. But we let the universe figure that out. Even if it's quirky, sometimes it's okay. So good things are happening for you, Scorpio. I love you and I'll be back again soon.